This afternoon, we would like to introduce Dr. Jody Schoenhaus, who is here to present on Healthy Feet for Healthy Walking. Dr. Schoenhaus is a podiatric surgeon. She received her undergraduate degree from the University of Michigan, her Doctor of Podiatric Medicine from Temple University, and her internship and residency from the Graduate Hospital in Philadelphia. Dr. Schoenhaus is a member of the International Aesthetic Foot Society, the American Podiatric Medical Association, the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons, and the American Diabetes Association. Dr. Schoenhaus has been in practice in Boca Raton since 2005. She is the founder of the Cosmetic Lower Extremity Practice at the Cosmetic Foot, Ankle, and Leg Vein Center. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Dr. Jody Schoenhaus to you this afternoon. Hello, good afternoon everybody. First I want to thank FINRA for having me as well as Boca Raton Community Hospital for inviting me to provide the lecture. Hello. So today I see everybody is here. We are going to be talking about the lower extremity, health and wellness of the feet, as well as potential leg vein disease. So without any further ado, we can get started. As you see, my name is Dr. Schoenhaus. I practice in Boca Raton and I'm just practically down the street practicing foot, ankle, and leg vein surgery. Just a basic background and understanding of the foot. The foot is an extremely intricate network and system of muscles and bones. It has 26 bones, which unite through 33 joints, 107 ligaments, and has 19 muscles. And this is a small entity. So compare that to a larger entity of the leg. I mean, it's an extremely intricate network that all has to work together to provide a function that provides a smooth gait. Keeping in mind that the average person takes about eight to 10,000 steps on your feet a day is extremely gruesome and can be very terrible on your feet. Especially with each step, you put two to three times your body weight on the foot twice. One when you heel down and once when you toe off. So three times your body weight can be pretty detrimental. Keeping in mind also there's 250,000 sweat glands in the foot. So it's very common to have swell, smelly feet as well as malodor, especially living in Florida, you can sweat a lot. And there are things that you can do, foot deodorants, powders, and other things. New recently is using Botox in the feet to prevent and decrease the amount of sweating and sweat gland production called hyperhidrosis. Here's just some tips and why to walk for better health. One, walking is fun. Certainly, it, it's a fun, free exercise that is very beneficial. So looking at walking and the benefits of walking, a longer, moderately paced walk where you do increase your cardiovascular system is good for weight loss. Shorter, faster walks are very good for heart and lung conditioning. They will help with breathing, and they will help really increase that heart rate. So people who run and people who are avid walkers and really do a lot of exercise have very good cardiovascular systems and actually their heart rate is kind of lower. Their resting heart rate is lower. Um, they're very healthy. Furthermore, walking just 20 minutes a day can take seven pounds off of your body per year. And on an average, every minute of walking can technically extend your life by a minute and a half to two minutes. Just a little fun fact. Certainly when it comes to me and walking, one of the most important factors is choosing the right shoe. You want to know your basic foot type. You want to be able to look down at your foot and say, okay, I have a flat foot, or I have a high arched foot, or I have a normal foot. The top is a flat foot. The bottom picture is a high arched foot. You may have heard the term pronation. A flat foot tends to pronate. A high arched foot tends to what we call supinate. So you want to analyze your foot. If you have a low arch or a medium arch or a high arch, you want to shop for those specific shoes. Certainly knowing your body weight. 
the heavier you are, the more support you're going to want to use in a sneaker. Also shopping at the end of the day when you have some swelling in your feet and your legs are the best time to shop for shoes because that's when the fitting will be most appropriate. And also wear socks that you're going to walk in. Don't go shoe shopping barefoot, then get home, put on a pair of socks and realize that it's not going to fit. Selecting the correct running shoe, very important. When here's where foot type and shoe really kind of mesh and are very important as far as motion control. The more rigid the foot you have, the more you want the shoe to work with your foot and, and give. So if you have a very high arch foot like the bottom, you want a curved design that will move with your foot and conform to your foot. If you have a flat foot, you want something that has a nice arch that will provide you with nice control. Certainly some walking do's, and here's some New Balance shoes. I, I do highly recommend New Balance, and I think they're a wonderful, well-constructed shoe for walking and running. For stretching, extremely important. You want to stretch prior to walking and after walking, on average about five minutes. And I do in the next slide have various walking exercises that you want to do. But you do want to stretch. Start slow and increase your time gradually. Don't say, I'm going to start walking and go out for an hour. Start walking 15 minutes, the next day 20, the next day 30. Gradually build out till you're at a nice pace and time that is comfortable for you. Certainly in the Florida heat, stay hydrated. After walking, again, stretch. You don't want to build up acids in your muscle system. So that will lead to pain later in the day as well as two days later. So you want to really stretch after. Wearing good socks that are comfortable and regularly fitting. If you walk at night, just be cautious. And get a friend. Get an exercise friend. If motivation is a difficult factor for you 